Greetings, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. 30th November 2022, John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Pray for us here in the city. Those of us who are on the front line having conversations with people about our Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> to be increasingly more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Recognizing that there are people who genuinely want to help, care, love people, and they are made in God's image so that they are here alive in this generation to fulfill their purpose and they may not know what their purpose is or they may have some inkling some idea of a direction to go to or to head towards but they don't know christ they're not born of god they're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit shows us the potential of such people, carers. People have been through difficulties, survived one way or the other, and they want to change, turn over a new leaf, do something useful in terms of caring, helping, and maybe counselling others. God has made us in his image, and of course God himself cares for us, loves us, wants to help us. God wants to be kind, gentle, loving, compassionate, and patient with us. That's who God is. God is love and all that that means. And God himself doesn't want anybody to be lost. But, of course, people are lost. And it remains to be seen whether people are lost sheep or goats, or wolves, etc. But God can save anybody and everybody if they themselves want to be saved. God can, but people have a choice. So I want to talk about this whole idea that God is not our employer and that we are not employees of God the employer. No more than Jesus himself was employed by the Father to do a job of preaching the good news, pastoring people, shepherding people, training people, teaching people, the Lord Jesus Christ himself was not an employee sent by an employer into this world. Man makes a big mistake when he applies worldly management, directing methods of the world to the nature of God that they may think that God is a president, a prime minister, a director, a chief exec, that God is like Pharaoh, Caesar, dictator, tyrant. God isn't that. God can be seen 
in the life of Jesus Christ, who we know Jesus Christ was, is, but was the incarnate God, Emmanuel, God with us, a human being, a perfect human being, who did not have sinful nature, but he could have sinned, but he didn't. He didn't sin. But he was tempted in every way to sin, but he didn't sin. He was the only blameless human being. Fully human, fully God. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. You've seen the Father, you've seen the Holy Spirit in a human being called Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. And Jesus Christ was not an employee. And Jesus Christ was not an employer. Not as the world understands employer, employee. Jesus Christ did not charge anybody anything for his teaching, his miracles, his service. Jesus never charged anybody. The disciples of Christ did not pay Jesus to teach them, to care for them, to shepherd them, to heal them. Jesus wasn't paid by anybody to do anything. Now, of course, I'm going to put this in the context of the modern day church and the vast majority of denominational churches are run as companies, organizations, charities, institutes, trusts, and whatever other form of legal term you can name partnerships, consultancies, ministries, are all registered with the local state government according to the law and according to all the laws, including uh, employment laws to do with employment, diversity, equality, minimum wage, etc. Modern day churches are run as businesses which involve buying and selling. And if you look at if you look at a service agency, which is what I used to have, an advertising marketing consultancy come agency, and we served our clients not for free, but for a commission but also for fees. And if we could get away with it, we marked up any products, services we bought to earn money from that side of things as well. And the business was very successful and we made a lot of money and we paid ourselves a lot of money. We spent a lot of money on ourselves. We indulged ourselves with the money. But I want to establish for us today the fact that we were selling a service and the clients we used to call punters, just like with prostitution, the so-called working girls, boys, offering their service to clients they call punters for money. And selling our service is how the world runs itself. So-called civilized society is all about transactions, giving, taking, receiving, and rewarding. Now again, some of these words we understand from the Bible point of view that we are rewarded by God for obedience. Blessings for obedience. Deuteronomy 28. But 
I had this conversation with somebody this morning about the fact that we all need money to pay the bills. And that is obviously a true worldly statement that we do need money to pay the bills. And I have money to pay the bills. But the church was not, quotes, invented by God as a business to buy and sell. Jesus Christ has taught us through the Bible, give without counting the cost. But we can't run a business off the books, so to speak, because it's against the law in whichever country you're talking about. If somebody, if I do a good deed for someone and they give me something and it's off the books and I don't declare it to the government, then I am breaking the law. And of course, as born again disciples of Christ, we are led to not break the law. And of course, I was brought up, I went to school, and I learned about subjects that would help me in, in working as an employee to be paid for, and I did my exams, and I learned the things of this world so that I could work in the world and be paid for by the world. But again, we're talking about the world. We're not talking about Christ. We're not talking about God. And God is not our employer. So, the righteous shall live by faith. But how does that work out in practical terms when all we've been taught is, is to learn, be educated, get our exams, go to college or university, get a good job and earn money and spend money and that is life. And of course that is the way of the world. But the way of Christ is not the way of this world. But the fact remains that churches, ministries, charities are all run according to the pattern of this world. But is that the purpose of church, ecclesia, God's people, the disciples, to run businesses? Well, of course, if you've been following me for a while, you'll understand that my purpose, having been saved from my sins, having been saved from hell and the eternal lake of fire, my purpose is to reach out to people to preach the true gospel of the true Christ in order that they might find salvation for themselves through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the cross, through the blood of the Lamb, recognizing that we are sinners in need of salvation. And nobody pays me to preach the gospel. There is a learning curve as a born-again Christian I'm not talking about churchgoers. Arguably, churchgoers, they don't want to learn. They're stuck in religion, in a religious church, going to church religiously once a week, once a fortnight, once a month. And they do religious things that keeps them going in life in a religious sense. But a certain percentage of churchgoers are not born again. Not born again. How can they enter into heaven if they're not born again? John 3, verses 3 to 7. We must choose to be born again. Just like with Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, a Pharisee, 
who would by all accounts say that he was, quote, saved and having an afterlife because of his obedience to the law. But of course, Jesus told him, you must be born again. John 3, verses 3 to 7. Once you're born again, hopefully you're nurtured by good, mature, born-again believers themselves who can, quote, bring you up to speed about where we are today as God's true servants, true servants in Christ, obedient disciples and ambassadors for King Jesus. So bringing in Christ's sheep to understand the truth, the truth in love. And all a person has to be is teachable, to have a spirit that can be taught. And of course, meeting people where they are, it means they are in the world and they may not understand that we are called to be in the world, not of the world. And of course, a young believer, a young Christian is in the world and of the world, but they will learn to be less and less and less of the world in a, in a real sense of being less of the world, more of Christ. And to submit more of their life to Christ on a daily basis. And this is where I am after 38 years times 365 days. Changed and changing. Going the way of Christ. Daily being led by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and it's taken all this time. Spirit, soul, and body. God frees us up, but there's a beginning and there's a progression of freedom, healing, deliverance, change, transformation by the work of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, is conforming us into the likeness of Christ so that we are changing to become more like Jesus and everything that that means, to help people, to pray for them, uh, allowing God, Jesus, to use us to bring healing to people, healing, deliverance, truth, truth in love, scriptures, and to enable people to understand that he, Christ, wants to set them free from their past, no matter who they are or what they've done or what even they think of themselves, that God can change them if they're willing to change. So I am encouraged when I meet someone with a teachable spirit who just wants to learn. And then in that process, that conversation of discussion, back and forth, we discover the call of God on a person's life. And I'm not talking about a career in Christianity or being... Or not a career in Christianity or being hired to do the job that God has called us to do. That is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that as true servants of Christ, we become employees of a church system. That is not what I'm saying. And it all comes down to conscience. What is God saying? And it's not that we should not receive the money 
If people offer us the money, we must be humble to receive it. But that is not the purpose of ministry for the money. And I know this is a very subtle motivation that some people have because they talk about the money rather than ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we receiving a service from true, genuine servants of God, that we are the ones, that we must be the ones who reward the true servants of God. That is not about employment, but this is about the Holy Spirit leading us to obey God because we are genuine stewards of the money that we have. Now, I'm going to leave it there because it's hard to explain how the kingdom of heaven works without money and talk about money. The money, the money that we have, is it belongs to God. Not just the money, our time, our talents, our gifting, that we can invest in other people who are open and teachable, who want to be taught by the Holy Spirit, who is working in us and through us. And the money may be something that we can um, put into a, a person's life as an investment, as a reward for genuine stewards themselves. And I'm not talking about a system. I'm not talking about a new ideology, a new form of Christianity. I am trying to understand myself how the kingdom of heaven works on earth as it is in heaven without the money, but also the money that we have can be useful to helping people realize the calling of God on their lives. And I'm not trying to uh, spiritualize ministry. I'm trying to understand the fact that there is a subtle difference between being an employee and a servant in Christ. Bearing in mind, Jesus wasn't paid to do what he did, which was to obey the Father's will. And he didn't want for anything. And he wasn't married. And he didn't have an earthly family through marriage with children. So we'll leave it there. There's no conclusion to this. This is just... It's a difficult thing for us to con uh, conceive with our minds a world without money. And I'm not talking about bartering either. I'm talking about being led by the Spirit to help people and not being selfish and mean for those who have to help those who haven't. So the rich young ruler in Jesus' day, go sell all you have, give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. In practical terms, what does that mean? You might have some ideas on that. But I'm asking you, how does that mean, what does that mean in your life? How do you see the rich young ruler selling all he had and what would he do with all the money that he realized from, for, from selling all he had? I'm now thinking of uh, one of the prophets. Was it Elijah or Elisha who was called of God and he burnt his plow? How practical is this? 
to be a true disciple of Christ, living by faith. God bless you, brethren of the one God. Pray for us as we pray for you. And we'll continue the conversation one day at a time, God willing. God bless.